Okay. Let's try this again. Hi, today is the day we are going to discuss something that's very important, and that is this book. We're doing a book review. I had planned to not do it while nursing, but um, apparently parenting and children have their own uh, thoughts. Welcome to the struggle, okay? Are you done? Are you done? You ain't about to be... Okay, well, goodbye. Goodbye, go live your best life, okay. All right, okay. Okay, well, say hello. Okay, anyways. Well. You want the other boob? So we're just gonna be doing this. This is what we're gonna be doing today during the book review. All right, that's cool. We're, we're flowing. Okay, so look, today we are reviewing the book called The Giving Tree. Dun, 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 dun. Um, this book has been, I believe, is promoted to many people, whether by friends, family, or library. I don't fucking know. Um, this was given to as friends for my kids. I got two of them. I'm assuming I'm assuming for one for each uh, toxic relationship with my baby daddies I had, but um, this this is uh, we're just gonna do the big one because on the back is this guy, and we're gonna talk about this guy. But with that being said, let's just start with the fact of the title. It's called The Giving Tree by whoever this guy is, because uh, Shell. We'll just call him Shell. Oh, good old Shell. Good old shell on the back here, okay? Um, so at first, you know, uh, I was gonna just kind of give my, my two cents on it. However, it was suggested and requested that I read the whole book to you guys. So I will go ahead and read the whole book today and we're gonna talk about it. So go ahead and give yourself a good 15 minutes. We're gonna go through this, we're gonna comment, and we're gonna share because this is a teaching tool. Did you hear me? A teaching tool. And this should be filed under emotional and psychological wellness, relationship maturity, how to and how to not to. Okay. That's what this book is for. This ain't some cute, oh, uh, you know, read, read, good night moon book. No, no, no. This needs to be discussed. Parent, parental advisory necessary. Do you understand? Parental advisory necessary. This ain't a book you just give to your kids. This needs to be talked about. We need a full-on book report, some definitions, and some discussion. Got it? Cool. Let's go. Shannon, close your door. Close your door. Go ahead and, and, and crack it because you're doing too much. Close your door. That was not a request for you to come out and talk to me. Close it. Why are you closing it with you not in there? Go in there. Go inside your room and just shut the door a little bit. That's good. Thank you. Okay. So for Nikki. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if Nikki's a girl. I wonder if Nikki's a girl, because then it would make sense on how he would make a book about the person he's abused. I said I go to the bathroom. Then go to the bathroom. Why is this my day today? Why is this my day today? Here we go. Once there was a tree. There's the tree, everybody. Can't believe I'm having to do this with my whole boob out. And she loved a little boy. And every day, the boy would come. Here go little boy. Run into the tree. And he would gather her leaves. There he is gathering leaves. She's just dropping leaves for the boy. Leaves is just dropping for him. She's like, all right, here you go, here's little boy. And make them into crowns and play king of the forest. Oh, he already said he was king. 
He's king. He came in here and he was like, look, you're going to give me these leaves and I'm going to be king of the forest. The whole forest, he said. Remember, we got to stay, we got to pay attention. We got to pay attention. He's going to be king of the forest. At least he didn't say world. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. That shows a lot of bending over to do as a trunk. This is supposed to be a trunk. This is a hard tree. Oh, that tree is just bending over. That's a nice, that's a nice, that's a, that's a bend. I hope she ain't always bending over. That sure was a bend in there. I mean, that, I don't think that's good for her stature or her, you know, keep in mind, um, you know, trees are supposed to be standing up tall. This doesn't look like the kind of tree that's supposed to be bending over. It could break. I don't think that's part of its normal everyday makeup. <clears throat> but whatever, you know, she's bending for him. You know, she got it. Apparently she got it. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. Look at her. Look at tree just covering the boy. Just covering the boy in the in the shade, leaning, still bending over. You know, I, I just would like to make it clear when she first met the tree, I just want to show something. Once there was a tree, keep in mind this tree was standing upright. She was standing upright when when, when they first met. You know, there was once was a tree. Okay. Now look at her. She already bending over. She already bending over. Just pay attention to some of these habits now and the things you do in these relationships. I don't think she's supposed to be that bent over. But okay, you know, she's, you just keep going on. And the boy loved the tree. The boy loved the tree. Sure he did. Sure that boy loved the tree. Very much. And the tree was happy. So the boy loved the tree very much. So this says me and tree. Me, me and T. T, I'm assuming, is the tree. Me and tree. You're done. Thank you. Daddy. Thank you. Daddy. Okay, goodbye. Go play with your sister. <laughs> Quiet you. So he, so apparently, the uh, boy loved the tree so much, he wrote on her. Okay, I just, I just want to make it clear. He wrote on her. He, he, he carved. So that means he took a knife, a sharp tool. I don't know if he had a knife, but he took a sharp tool and he cut into her. He cut into her because we know it's a her because. It was a she. We talk about it, this, this tree being she because it said she was happy. It, I know she. He would gather her leaves, her leaves, right? So this is, you know, I, she identifies as she, okay? And he loved so much that she that he cut into her and wrote his name and her name on her because apparently she needed her name. On her too. She needed her name on her too. Okay. So she went and got in tag. You know, but I don't know if it was by her choice. Because he was like, I love you so much. This is what I'm gonna do for you. It sounded like you did that for you for him, but apparently he convinced her that it was for her. That's what love looks like. I hope we're paying attention. But time went by. You're looking a little big. Okay. Time went by. And the boy grew older. Oh, I just got chills. Look at this picture. Time went by. All right. She was, he was leaning up against her. Let's just go back one. 
Let's go back one because we need to look. Okay, he's leaning up against her. Once again, she's always providing shade. Always leaning over. Always bending for a good old boy here. And the boy grew older. What the fuck is this? The audacity of this nigga right here. Okay, wait a minute. Nick. Oh, I, t I tell you about. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Who is this? Who is what? Me and YL. point something out okay okay <laughs> the disrespect the audacity the levels of disrespect in this page right here you know what these are these is tears these is tears coming from the tree one two these is tears and he had the nerve to put another bitch's name on her trunk Boy, 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 I tell you, boy. Woo! Woo! Look, I know half of y'all are triggered right now. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Got the nerve. To be good with their feet off and everything. Was they climbing her tree too? Because every time he had the feet off, he was climbing her. I didn't, I don't even think he discussed this with her. Did he even discuss this with her? Uh-huh, that's some of this whole tech of stuff that's going on these days. They don't even discuss that they're going to bring other people up in here. They just, next thing you know, he's like, this is how we do it. You know, if you studied anthropology and you knew that this is the best way. I mean, he probably told her all kinds of stuff. Or he told her nothing at all. But these are tears falling down the tree's face. Because he just popped up with a new bitch and then put the, and then tattooed on her. But let's keep going. Let's just keep going. And the tree was often alone. Mm. The tree was often alone. He didn't got him a new girl. Tattooed the new girl on her. And then... She just then walked away and just never came back. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of words. But here we go. Ready? <clears throat> then one day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, Come, boy, and climb. Come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I am too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money and you will be happy. I hope, I hope you guys are paying attention. Come and climb and play up the trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples. Come hang out with me, she's saying. Come hang out with me. Come be with me. Come, let's do the things that we used to do that I enjoyed and you enjoyed together. He said, no, I'm too big for that. Remember, I got a new bitch. <laughs> I want to buy things and have fun. I need some money. You got money? Do you have money? She said, I'm sorry, I don't have it. But I do have some resources so you can come get some. But whatever makes you happy. This is the time, this is this this is when you start to introduce the word boundaries to your children. But we're gonna keep going. We're gonna get through all the the terms necessary after we read this.
And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples. What are you doing? Okay. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Okay. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. <clears throat> so he climbed and climbed up the tree. Once again, she's bending over for this guy who only wants some money. Things, asking her for things she don't have. At no point in time does this tree look like she got pockets, a pocketbook, a bank account. You know, she's a tree. But he's like, I need money. I'm going to come to you and tell you, give me some money. Because he always obviously walked over there to just say, give me what I need. But, I mean, this looked like the whole goddamn, he needed all her apples? All of her just look at this picture. But the tree was happy. Allegedly. But the boy stayed away. Next page. But the boy stayed away. He didn't just stay away. For a long time. And the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back. And the tree shook with joy and she said, come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I just want to point something out, the boy. This is, this is how you walk back after a long time. And she said, boy, this is a grown ass balding man. This man is balding. This is a man, this is a grown ass man, balding. But she's still calling him boy. And he responds, I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children. And so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house, but you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. So he said he ain't trying to climb no trees. He ain't trying to do the things that they used to do, the things that made her smile, the things that they enjoyed together. He said he need a house. He wants a wife and some kids. And you ain't gonna give that to me. So, so you know, help me get this house so I can take care of my, my wife and my kids. <clears throat> so she obliges and says, here, she offers out her arms and says, here's my branches. So at this point, some of y'all might be thinking like, come on tree, come on tree, come on, come on now, start. let's start paying attention, let's start paying attention. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. Cut off her branches, cut off everything that sprouted and from the fruits of her labor from a from a seed. Just cut it off. He walking away with a smile. Look at him. Looking like an abuser. However, they said, and the tree was happy. Bald and happy. No branches, but she's happy. Allegedly. Allegedly, she's happy. <clears throat> We're almost done. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered. Sound like she getting old, too. I am too... Come and, come and play. She whispered, come and play. I am too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. 
Can you give me a boat? I mean, I, I just heard him say, come, come play with me. And he was like, no, nah, I, I need to get far away from here. I'm trying to get far away from you, too. I don't fuck with you like that. That's what he said. But she didn't hear that. She said, okay, cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. <laughs> First of all, she's still calling this old motherfucker boy. Okay? She ain't got no branches. She getting old. Look, she got wrinkles in her trunk. Okay, she getting old too. She's like, let's just be together. And he like, nah, I ain't a boat. Apparently he ain't got no money. He must have been divorced. The wife took him for everything because he wasn't shit. That's a clear, he wasn't shit, okay? Took everything. So he's like, hey, let me just get on this. Let me just get this boat so I can sail away because I'm going to run away. I'm going to run away from who I am and what it is that I do to people because I'm not responsible for how I treat people. I'm not responsible or, re or accountable for wh what I've done to others. I'm not going to address or confront what makes me do these things to people. I'm just going to get a boat and go away and run away from my problems and keep trying to run from myself. And so the boy cut down her trunk. Oh, what a hammer! Hammered at her. Let's, I mean an axe, not a hammer. That's an axe. He took an axe to her. Couldn't even get no pro tools, no power tools. Got an axe and chopped at her. He chopped. Let me play, I need to make it very clear. He chopped at her. This is the equivalent of stabbing somebody. Over and over and over and over again. And made a boat and sailed away. And made a boat and sailed away. Give you a clean one. <clears throat> That's a dirty one. Here, you can take this one. Okay. Now it's really interesting on how he left the me and T right here and took this one and walked away. And the tree was happy. And the tree was happy, but not really. Now keep in mind, we went through multiple pages where it said the tree was happy. And she was happy. And she was happy. And I kept saying allegedly she was happy. Because in no way does this type of, of relationship show happy. But come to find out, she was never really happy. And, but not really, not really, right? And, and I didn't want to get ahead of myself, but I think it's really important because if people stop listening, one thing y'all need to know is a lot of people in these types of relationships and they're always perpetrating and fronting and putting on face that they're happy. They're happy giving to this extent to people, one, who don't acknowledge or recognize or accept who that person is, right? Because there's a lot of that going on in this relationship. They're not like, they're not accepting that. I am a tree and this is what I can give you. This person is saying, I'm a boy and this is what I need and you can't give me that. I am a tree and I need to recognize I'm a tree and that I can't give this person what he needs. I am a tree and I need to also acknowledge that in being a tree that I need to create and be better as a tree. How do you a tree? There's a lot, this, no one was accepting who they were and being honest with who they were and not accepting who the other person was because this person is an abuser. The boy who chopped at her like this was an abuser. He recognized and knew that she couldn't, but also took advantage of the fact 
that, hey, I want to, I'm happy when I give to you. And I'm like, cool. His narcissistic self is ass was like, I'm going to just keep taking that. You want to keep giving? No big deal. I'm going to keep taking. I'm going to keep taking. I'll keep taking. And the tree didn't put up no boundaries. And she kept saying, well, I'm happy. And, and, and she was in denial. She was in denial of that little boy who, one, used to just play with what it is and accept and love what she had. Initially, right? At first, it was a very healthy relationship of providing shade. She didn't have to lose anything for providing shade, for being strong, for him to climb up the tree and play with her. For taking one or two apples in the beginning. There's only two apple cores. I can give two apples. I'll grow more. That's within my scope of giving. But they outgrew that. She had a hard time of letting go. She had a hard time accepting that they had grown apart. So therefore, she didn't set any proper emotional boundaries. And what are boundaries? Boundaries, by definition, is a process of determining what behavior you will accept from others and what you will not. It opens the door for others to determine your thoughts, feelings, and needs. We don't do that. We have to set the boundaries, physical and emotional boundaries. This is very important, very important, but I'm going to keep going. And after a long time, the boy came back again. And the first thing she says, I am sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. Before he even says, hello, how are you? This is what I need. She's like, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. First of all, the emotional manipulate, the psychological manipulation and trauma that this tree has endured, the emotional labor that this tree has endured. The first thing she says is I'm sorry to the abuser who took everything from her. I'm sorry. I just want to say I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have anything. I'm sorry. Sorry. Look in the soldier boy voice. Sorry. Here, do you want a mango? But I have nothing left to give you. Still calling him boy. Still calling him boy. She says, my apples are gone. He says, my teeth are too weak for apples. That's your response? My apples are gone? And your response is, my teeth are too weak for apples? My apples are gone? My teeth are too weak for apples? No, that's okay. All right, that's the first response. Let's go to the next one. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I am too old to swing on branches, said the boy. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Woo! Yeah, this, this is when you got to start knocking on the wood. <laughs> because there's apparently no accountability here. Or, or any empathy or compassion. None. Zero. He like, I mean, I can't, I ain't got no, I'm too old to swing on your goddamn branches anyway. Plus, I cut all the motherfuckers off. Like, what you mean? Like, of course you ain't got no branches. I ain't gonna swing on them no way. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. You cannot climb. You know what this means? That means he cut her ass off. My trunk is gone. You cannot. He cut her ass off and says, I'm too tired to climb. First of all, first of all, this is the second, this is the second motherfucking time I'm over here telling you my woes, bitch, and you over here cutting me off. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot, I'm too tired to climb. I'm triggered, said the boy. Why is she crying, Shannon? Why is she crying? Snatch from her again and watch what happens. Because I saw you try to give it back. 
Parenting never stops. Yeah. Leave her alone. She's a Tori back there. No, no. <laughs> I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I am sorry. I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I am sorry. Before I turn to the next page, let's talk about how when you get in these abusive relationships and you stay for so long, you start to devalue yourself. You start to devalue yourself. You tell you that you have nothing left. You tell you that you are nothing. You tell, you tell yourself that there's nothing good about you. You tell yourself that you that everything that was God about you, everything that defined the positive things, the positive, strong aspects and characteristics and skill sets that made you great are now you consider them nothing. Now you're sitting here telling yourself you have nothing left. You have nothing to give. You have no worth. You have no value. You're sitting there saying sorry. You just want to say sorry to everybody. Sorry that you didn't like me. Sorry that I have nothing to give you. It took everything from me. I wish I had more. I wish I believed I had more. I wish I was more. Even though they was, she was just fine as she was. The stump, the strong stump that grew into a powerful tree. She said that's I'm nothing now. I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. Calling herself old. Putting herself down. He didn't have to say nothing to her. She just starts putting herself down. Then this is what we do in these narcissistic abusive relationships. We start to tell ourselves, I am nothing. I have nothing. We're so ashamed. Shame. Shame would even allow us to keep talking to a motherfucker like this. Soon as he approached, we should have just been silent. We should have not even addressed or engaged with this person. But instead, we just like, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed. This is the only person that knows me. This is the only person I can talk to. I'm going to tell him I don't have any more branches left because I'm too scared to tell anybody what happened to my branches. But I can tell him because he know I'm so sorry that I don't have any more apples. You cut them all off. I'm so sorry I don't have my trunk. You cut that off. But I don't want to tell nobody that because now I know everybody's going to talk bad about me just like I'm talking bad about myself. That's called codependency. This is called trauma bonding. She's just going to talk about everything that she don't have. Talking to a man who don't even care. He don't even care that she got no more, that she ain't got no branches. He don't care that she ain't got no trunk. He like, I mean, I, don't, I can't use none of that shit no way now. Still putting out his hand. Why he ain't standing with his hands by his side? Still putting out his hand to touch you, to keep manipulating, to keep taking. Where is the self-love, the self-care? There was no self-care. It gets better. Let's just keep going. Now that he old, divorced, wife is gone, kids obviously ain't taking care of his ass because he back to the tree, right? Because they have this healthy, unhealthy, toxic relationship. Of him taking her just giving. Of her just giving because she's in denial. She's still calling him boy. Okay. <clears throat> he look about 200 years old. He probably 50. I know he's white. You know, have an age. You know, so. And all this karma probably come getting his ass. So he probably looking way older than what he really is. All that taken was taken from his soul. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, 
sit down. Sit down and rest. And the boy did. A couple things I want to point out. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. So here she is continuing to devalue herself. But she's like, at least you come sit on me. And at the end of the day, she straightened up her little stump, which once was, you know, she was sad. She was, she, she was too tired to keep promoting that she was happy. She couldn't do it. Leaned over, bent over, cook it. She couldn't do it. There was nothing left she could give. She was, she was already defeated, broken down, taken apart. Too much. It was, she couldn't even front no more. She couldn't even front no more, but she was embarrassed and ashamed. So all she did was keep letting this motherfucker back in so she could keep talking about how much she was taken from and what she ain't got. Because he's the only one, that I guess, that's there for her. He forgives her. You know, he's going to keep coming back to her because he loves her. Remember, this is what love looked like. She was, he was carving into her, chopping her down, taking from her, and saying, I love you. And she recognized that as this is love for me. So then she straightens up what little she got because she ain't learned because there was no boundary set. But we knew when she didn't have no boundary set because she kept engaging with a narcissist. A lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. A lot of y'all are still to this day engaging with a narcissist. Knowing damn well he's only coming to take. He's not coming to give. He's not going to have practice compassion. He's not going to say anything. He's not going to acknowledge. He's just going to sit there and be like, I mean... What else you got though? And apparently she had enough to just straighten herself up because manipulation, gaslighting, works. And here it is back into this codependency of this abusive manipulative relationship of how she defines happy. And she said, and the tree was happy. So here is old ass is sitting on a stump, the end. I hope today somebody learned something. I hope today somebody learned something. I hope y'all were able to take something from this. Um, and uh, let's... Let's discuss a few things. I don't know who this man is. I don't know what his life looks like but the way he threw his big ass picture on here on the back of the book i don't know that screams narcissist to me i have to make it about him because this is where i'm at in my life so i'm just gonna make it about him because he wrote the shit okay this is a very good teaching tool This book most certainly is not an apology to anyone. That's how abusers do. They try to write books and use artistic works to think that that's saying sorry. It's not saying sorry because somebody had commented this book is an apology. There's nothing about here. Where in here does it describe what they're going to do better from this point on? Where in here does it say, because this is how they get you. That's a very, I'm so glad someone wrote that. That's, that's an unhealthy relationship. Sister, you may still be stuck in a narcissistic relationship, an abusive, toxic relationship. If you think that this is an apology, nowhere in here does it describe. Does he say, I sought therapy. I sought therapy and now I want to work on being more, uh, uh, practicing reciprocity in our relationship. Nowhere in here did it say, I would like for us to talk about ways that I could be a better friend to you. I would like to, to, to do some things. Tell me what it is that I need to do to best honor and respect you. Tell me what I can do to best support you in growing. Do you need some more fertilizer at your roots? Do you want that, um, 
Do you, how can I best, do I need to provide you some shade while you're a stump right now? I understand that I put a, I, I cause a lot of the pain that you have right now. And I hope that we can learn together, me one as a huge taker without any boundaries and, and, and an empathy and compassion for what it is that I took from somebody, but also you as a tree to, to create some more boundaries for yourself so that we can post, both practice some self-love and some self-care. Because apparently I don't love myself enough and I just put that all on you. How can I get you some water? Maybe what what do I do? Can I put can I put a can I plant more seeds next to you? Maybe maybe if you had some more sister support, some support, some family around you. You know, you would probably grow faster. Maybe let me get some more bees around here. I think of maybe starting a beehive. You know what I'm saying? A colony to help support, you know, some from some life. Because you've been out here all by yourself, giving to me. And I may have not used those resources to the best to support us, even as a friendship. Okay? Like, we have to be so careful. These are the things. So when we have this book, when we have this book, this is not just a book we just read to kids without any explanation of what the fuck we are reading. This is a book that helps teach boundaries. This is a book that teaches identifying abusive relationships, identifying narcissism, identifying toxic relationships. This is also a book that talks about denial. Okay, we have to be clear about what denial looks like. All right, learning to accept, right? Both parties need to accept. Okay. But I hope that you guys enjoyed. Uh, if, do we have any questions, comments, concerns? If so, please feel free to write them in the comment section. If you saw me going back and forth, it's because I'm on Facebook and uh, Instagram at the same time. Okay. Um, this is the Giving Tree Book Review by Ms. Wright's Way. Hopefully we can all continue the conversation in the comments. I will also post this on YouTube. This is not a sweet story. This is a story of what happens when we are not present. When we are not taking care of ourselves. And we do not set up boundaries and practice emotional wellness and maturity. Hope is a good thing. Too much hope is denial. Acceptance is not approval. I love you. Let's raise very conscious, healthy, happy kids. Peace.